Hello and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Janet McKinley. I'm a regional director in Northern and Central California, and I am very pleased to be joined by Callie Carbajal, who is one of our uh, wonderful first alumni um, for this latest edition of our first alumni spotlight. Hello, Callie. How are you doing? Hello there. I'm doing really good. Really happy to be here. Thank you. Excellent. excellent. So why don't we just start off? How about you tell us how you got involved with FIRST? Yes, so I got involved with FIRST in a little bit of an interesting way. Um, in middle school, I actually was a pretty big athlete, really into sports, and um, I injured myself pretty badly, and I was told I could no longer play. Well, uh, I needed something to do with my time, and my eighth grade honor science teacher had no clue what to do with me, so she threw me over to the robotics team. I got to see a little bit like as an eighth grader, you know, what was going on, what it was all about. I didn't know at all what engineering was. Um, so I just kind of jumped in, didn't know what it was, and then, you know, thought it was a pretty cool group of people. Never built a robot before myself, but I was excited to try. And that got me hooked on computer-aided design, and I've been with FIRST ever since. Excellent, excellent. So what have you done since becoming an alumni? So since becoming an alumni at FIRST, and specifically I was on the FIRST Robotics Competition Team 1671, the Buchanan Bird Brains. Um, since then, I went to college at UC Davis to get my degree in materials engineering. And once I graduated from that, I went on to work in industry. Um, I work in the security hardware industry where I am a project manager for engineering and development projects. That's awesome. So um, what uh, is the one thing that you wish you had known before you started your career? Yes. So I haven't been in my career very long, but I think something that, you know, younger Callie would have liked to know was a little bit more about I think the differences between college and corporate. So, you know, I think that was a pretty big culture shock for me moving from, you know, just engineering all day and academia, moving into the very fast paced corporate world um, and engineering development was like a pretty big change of pace. And it took a while for me to kind of get acclimated to um, the way things are done in industry. And so I think I would have liked to know that a little bit sooner. Sounds like some, some good advice. Any other advice you'd want to give somebody that's looking to pursue a career similar to yours? You know, I think if someone was wanting to, because, you know, my degree was in engineering, um, but I have pursued a project management path. Um, and I think if you are wanting to know if this is the right career for you is you got to ask yourself do you like the engineering world of course first but then number two do you like working in teams or with teams of engineers to solve a common problem because if you're here in first you probably do and that's what project managers do we help teams of engineers and teams across the company work together to get a product launch on time, under budget, and with high quality. Excellent. Okay, so now thinking back to 18-year-old Callie, um, mm. is there anything that you'd want to tell her? Thinking all those years back to 18-year-old Callie, I think what I would have to say is, hmm, I think I would say to calm down a little bit and to enjoy what I was doing a little bit more. I think when I was 18, I was always in a rush, you know, always, you know, we had to, you know, rush to build the robot, a rush to get to competition, a rush to get my schoolwork done, a rush for AP tests, a rush to apply for college, to accept a college, you know, figure all of that out. Um, I think I really wish I would have stepped back and taking a moment to enjoy a little bit more the experience that I was going through that last year of high school, the start of college, you know, my last year with FIRST, 
um, those are really things I think that everyone listening now should enjoy and to appreciate what they're going through because, you know, once you graduate, you graduate and you're an alumni and there's lots of cool stuff um, that you can do as an alumni, of course, but you never get that, uh, necessarily get on that team again. Very, very true. Um, and I know you've continued to do a lot mm -hmm. of things um, being involved with FIRST um, since you graduated. Um, what sort of things have you been up to? So since I graduated from being a member of FIRST, what I have done since is a couple of different roles across the, the FIRST family that we have going. So um, in Central California, where I'm based out of, I am the uh, director of First Lego League and the affiliate partner for First Lego League Challenge uh, for Central California. So um, for the past couple of years, I have been helping put on uh, the First Lego League Challenge events all across Central California um, and helping with that. I'm also the regional judge advisor for uh, First Lego League Challenge as well. Besides that, I've also been refereeing at multiple first robotics competition regional events across California ever since I graduated high school. Um, and since I've been doing that, I have actually um, became a head referee. Now with COVID, um, I have not had the opportunity to actually get on the field and be a head referee, but hopefully soon I'll be able to do that. Um, and kind of continue the mantle there. Yes, yes. Very regrettable that we didn't get to put you on oh. the referee, but almost there. Mm -hmm. so cool. we'll, con we'll continue on next year, hopefully. Um, so now I know that you've helped a lot of people through FIRST. Um, tell us how FIRST has helped you. So FIRST has helped me a lot. You, you heard me mention a little bit earlier that I had no clue what engineering was or what robotics was before, before I started doing it myself. Um, you know, I just jumped right in. So I would not have been exposed to this whole career path unless, unless I had done that. So you know, quite frankly, I owe my whole you know, educational and career path to FIRST. And for FIRST to open that door for me and for me to realize that I could be an engineer you know, and I can help with engineering projects and, you know, um, be involved in that whole world was not something that I thought that I could do or that I even had the skill set for. But first, A, gave me the confidence to pursue that sort of education, the STEM education, um, and B, helped give me the skill set that I needed to be successful in that field, being able to work on a team, solving problems, using tools, you know, out. On an FRC team, I used real world tools that we still use nowadays. Um, and I think that was a really, it kind of gave me that, that leg up, that little bit of extra help, that boost of confidence that I needed to know that I could really be successful in this field. Awesome, awesome. Do you have any advice for our current uh, first participants? I definitely do. So for current first participants, what I would say, of course, is enjoy it. You heard me mention it doesn't last forever. We definitely want you back as an alumni. But if you're currently in first, I would say enjoy it. I would say also don't get stuck just doing one thing. I think the beauty of a first team is that you can really diversify and try a whole bunch of different things. So, you know, whether it's robot design, programming, electronics, marketing, um, you know, anything like that. I think this is the best possible chance for you to cross pollinate, to get a whole bunch of different skills, to realize what you like doing, what you don't like doing, figure it out there on that team because that's a great place to grow, make mistakes, find yourself without having too many real world repercussions. Definitely, definitely. Um, what is the, uh, what's the one favorite first memory that you have thinking back? To your participation oh geez i have a lot a lot of really good memories in my first participation but i think one of the best moments for me was one of or the first year actually the first year that i went to the first championship that was my freshman year of high school back in 2011 
um, that was also my first year involved with FIRST. And I think that championship has a lot of really good memories for me because it really showed me, you know, the, the regionals are really great. Of course, being on a team is really great. But being at the FIRST championship kind of showed me what FIRST could really turn into. Like it made it very vibrant to me. It made it really, you know, somewhere I knew I wanted to go back, not just because I wanted to compete with my robot again, which of course I did, but because I got to meet so many different people, you know, you got to, I got to meet all different international teams, teams from different states I have never met before, people from industry who were visiting, you know, scholarship row. So, you know, I was, I was like, wait a minute, like this is actually something pretty big and pretty cool <laughs> that I hadn't really realized that before. That's some great memories actually. Um, so what, uh, what makes you so passionate about advancing science and technology, engineering and mathematics? I am very passionate about expanding STEM education and accessibility to it because I think exactly what inspired, you know, me, I know that I got so much out of first, the confidence, the skills, um, to be successful in STEM, and I want as many young people as possible across the United States, across the world, to be able to have that opportunity that I did to build confidence, to build skills, to learn something new every single day, to make connections, to make friends who were interested in similar subjects that I was. Um, excellent, excellent. So now um, we know there's disappointment with last year's um, games being postponed and, and canceled and whatnot. And of course, you not being able to take on that head referee role actually in person. Um, is there any silver lining that you see based on, you know, because of this pandemic? Is there anything that you see or that you've noticed um, as a silver lining? This new world we've all been thrown into. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I think you know the silver lining to all of this, what I've seen for me is the way that we have diversified the way that we participate in the workplace. I mean, for a majority of the pandemic, I worked from home. I worked from home, worked with my teams across digital platforms, and we got the job done. We got the problem solved. So I think beforehand, we maybe would have never tried to, you know, run projects with everyone in different locations. Actually, across the world, this was um, an international team. And, you know, we're still able to make it happen. And I would have never thought that we'd be able to do that. So I think with the honing and perfecting of, like, online tools, whether it's online meeting tools, video meetings, you know, chats, all sorts of things, I think we've made working a lot more accessible for a lot of different people. And a lot of people like to be in the office. Some people don't like to be in the office. It's just not the best working environment for them. Or it's hard to get to the office. Well, if you work from home, you can effectively work from everywhere. And so I think that has been the interesting upside um, to this pandemic, if, if you can say that there was one. Exactly. Yeah, I uh, heard a lot of people that have enjoyed working from home. Even yeah, they're at home all the time. Um, mm -hmm. but the, the lack of a commute definitely affords people with uh, more time on their hands. That's true. Um, now, is there something that uh, you can tell us that most people don't know about you? Um, let's see. Something that most people don't know about me. I would say there are a couple of things. Um, but the most fun one might be, I might not look like it. I don't talk about it a lot if you don't know me, but I happen to be an avid gardener. So it doesn't matter if it's house plants, vegetable plants, fruit plants, citrus trees. I'm trying them all. This has been a, a, a newer hobby for me, but I think I have over a hundred plants already. So I've had a little bit too much fun. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. It brings a little uh, bit of life inside, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers? I don't think I have too much extra necessarily to share with our viewers here. But what I would say is 
viewers take this time that we have, you know, during the pandemic and, and you know, during this, I, I wouldn't say break with your teams because I know a lot of the teams, you know, you guys are still together, you're still working, um, you'll still be attending those remote events this season. But I would definitely take advantage of this time to self-reflect on both yourself what you're wanting to do with your career, what you're wanting to do with your education, or even just, you know, what you want to major in, just, you know, take this time to look in at yourself and make sure that what you're doing makes you happy and brings you joy and make sure you don't get too far down a path that you realize doesn't serve you. Excellent words, excellent words. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for your time and um, keep, keep going on, you're doing great. It's thank great you. to hear from you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you for having me. It's my honor to be here with you and hope you have a great rest of your day.